and tube and Snapchat and rumbling fucks. Shake your tits and swing your dicks. You made it to your favorite day of the week. No, not because it's Friday, but because you get another fresh out of the box action packed installment of the Friday wrap up. That's right. Tickle your taints and rejoice. So, you made it to the Friday wrap up once one more time. And man, what a show we got for you today. So, before I get today's show kicked off, I want to tip my hat to today's libation. I figure since the end of the summer is approaching, I might as well end it the same way I started it, with tequila. So, you know, I love these, like, tequila cocktails for the beach, right? And I, I personally, I'm not, I mean, I like margaritas. It's my favorite mixed cocktail, well, one of my favorite mixed cocktails, especially for the summer. But typically when I drink tequila, you know, especially if I, if I plan on making tequila my friend for the day, it's pretty simple. It's usually tequila, club soda, and either a lime or a lemon. I actually I prefer the lemon, but no one ever hears me say fucking lemon and they put lime in the drink. But I'll digress. Anyhow, uh, cut water, the ones that make my favorite margarita in a can, actually make a tequila and club soda cocktail. It's actual tequila. It's not the cheap shit. Um, but they call it ranch water. I've been drinking tequila and club soda for probably a good, I don't know, 20, 25 years. I never knew it had a fucking name. I, I, I feel like they just invented the name. Just to make it sound cute. I mean, I promise you, you go into a bar, and you look at the bar, they go, I'd like a ranch water, please. They're going to piss in a glass and give it to you, okay? To me, ranch water would be cow piss. But, eh, anyway, this has tequila in it, so we're going to drink it. I love that sound, okay? Um, they, these originally came in like a normal can, and they put them in these skinny clink cans, I, I think to make the chicks happy. Uh, I mean... They like things in skinny can, but then again, these do these do fit better in a cooler. But you know, hey. So there we go. Alrighty. So, Azalud, drink up and be somebody. Oh, that is delightful. And this has just a little hint of lime in it too. Um, yeah, and a couple of these, and you're fucking, you're on your ass. So they're they're, they're fun to have with you on the beach, especially with the heat and the dehydration. It's delightful. Okay, so. Uh, I gotta take another sip of that. That was good. Ah, crisp and clean and no caffeine, man. Remember those old Seven Up commercials? Thank God they don't put tequila, uh, caffeine in tequila. I think my fucking head would explode. That's why I don't. I stopped drinking uh, Cafe Patron. Okay, so like I said, got a hell of a show for you today. Uh, wow, what what a week I had. What a fucking week. So, I was in the city all week, all right? And, oh my God, what a fucking shit show. So, I spared myself the fucking headache of taking the train, and I just drove in every day. But, wow. Um. <laughs> so, this is the inspiration of Uncle Tommy's big-ass show today. So, I like I said... Being in the city all week, I, the news doesn't even capture the fucking atrocities that I've seen. I've seen more homeless people's ass cracks in three days than I can to see in the, my entire life. I mean, it's a sin what these Democrat fucks let happen to this city. As a matter of fact, so I was over at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Times Square is like a hotbed for these fucking, these degenerates. So I go outside in the afternoon to smoke a cigar, and I'm standing there, and I see some 70-year-old woman shooting up. She's literally tying off in a fucking doorway and shooting up. 70 years old, this broad looked like. Um, I, I know heroin ages you, but she, she was an old lady. Let's, let's fuck her face. The sad part is <laughs> that this 70-year-old heroin addict looked like she was in better shape than my mother. I hate to say it. But yeah, that's that's just a that's just the tip of the dick on some of these fucking atrocities. Um, so the reason I was in the city is I was doing a trade show uh, for for my business, and <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say something. <laughs> I never saw more lumpy, disheveled looking fucking mutants in one place before. I mean, what the fuck is happening? I mean, now granted. Nobody was a local. 
Okay, so I'm not picking on, you know, people in the tri-state area. These people were all from the northwest and the mid-south, okay? Yeah, I had like a couple of, you know, east coast southerners peppered in here and there, and maybe a few, you know, avocado heads from California, but the majority of the people were from the mid-south and, like, the northwest. Holy fucking shit. I mean... Uh, these 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 animals all converged on New York City like a case of explosive diarrhea, as if New York City didn't have enough fucking problems, right? So I, I, all I kept thinking is, what the fuck is going on with the people in these states? It looked like someone took a bunch of ugly ass people and experimented on them until they turned into these lumpy, mutated uh, uh, abominations. Either that, or they, they're mating with aardvarks. I'm not kidding. You could go mountain climbing on some of these people. Listen, if you laid a bunch of them out in, like, Bryant Park during a snowstorm, you could turn Midtown into a fucking ski resort. This was like the buffet line at the fucking Golden Corral in hell. I, I've never seen... I've never seen atrocities like this. They made people in fucking Walmart look regular, okay? Just saying. I met this one woman. Her name was LaDainty. So hi, my name is Dainty. <sighs> dainty she was not. Uh, the Dainty would not be the adjective that I would use to describe this broad. Okay? Just say it. I mean, she ha th there were spaces in her teeth that you could fucking... You could do a figure eight with a Mack truck through. Okay? This girl must floss with a Buick if she flosses. I mean, I just, there was, there was, it, 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 it just didn't stop. It was like, I, I've seen some of the most malaligned, misshaped fucking people. There was one guy, he, I don't know, he was fat and he had edema. He was so fat, he had saddlebags like under his arms and he's wearing Bermuda shorts and his fucking legs were like blue from the edema. And his fat calf was melting around his fat ankle. He was all fucking, and I had like candies out. On the table, right? Like little bags of candy. He walked... I thought he was going to ejaculate on himself. He looked and goes, Oh my God, this is the best thing I've seen all day. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I, I just... I, one woman who had all... She had all broken teeth. Her, I mean, literally, she's not talking about... Her te every fucking tooth in her mouth was broken. It looked like someone banged her in the face with a goddamn hammer. Like, what did you piss off, Thor? Like, I don't, how the fuck are all of your teeth broken? What are, you, are you chewing on rocks? Okay, these mutations are supposed to be fucking professionals. The most professional-looking guy looked like fucking Orville Redenbacher. You know, the popcorn guy. Even at the fucking boat. Every time this motherfucker walked past me, I wanted popcorn. Okay, none of these creatures should be allowed outside of a fucking zoo. So yesterday, right, we wrapped up the trade show in the afternoon. After all this fucking madness, I figured, you know what? I'm in the city. I'm going to go treat myself to lunch at one of my favorite Jewish delis, Sarge's. I love this place. First of all, this place has been open since, I think, oh, 1964, 65, something like that. Uh, it, it was open 24 hours, seven days a week. Like, I could walk in there. At fucking 3 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day, I got a pastrami sandwich. I mean, granted, they're Jewish. They should be open. But this place never closed. That was the thing. They didn't even have a key for the front door, apparently. Well, now it closes at 11 o'clock. We could thank COVID and the two idiot fucking mayors that New York City had for ruining that convenience. So I figured I'd go in there for one of my favorite fucking sandwiches that I've been jonesing for for the longest time. Now, I haven't been to this place probably three years. Okay? You know, before COVID. But, I mean, I was... I would pop in there like once or twice a month. You know, sometimes I get, I'll lead you for a, a pastrami sandwich at like, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I jump in a car, drive over up, drive over to the, uh, the city. I'm only 15, 20 minutes away. And this place is right outside the tunnel. It's in Murray Hill. Nice section, right on, right on third Avenue, 36th and third. So yeah, I would, I would pop in there all hours of the night. Everything is good there. Their sandwiches, their tuna melt, everything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So, I, I, I popped in there for one of my favorite sandwiches, the Duo. Take a look. Huh? I mean, does that not look fucking delightful? It's probably about two pounds of pastrami and corned beef with some Russian dressing that they make in-house and their homemade coleslaw on rye bread. 
Like I'm telling you, I, ha I have fucking wet dreams about this sandwich. Um, and let me tell you something. I would put this place up against any fucking Jewish deli in the city. Katz's, Carnegie, Ben's. This was the spot. And I say was because after yesterday, I just, I can't say that anymore. Now, maybe, maybe they just had an off day. Okay. So I ordered my sandwich and their homemade French fries. The fries were still good. You can't fuck up French fries. Of course, you got to wash everything down with a Dr. Brown's cherry soda. But the sandwich was, I, although it looks beautiful, right? Because when I saw it, like I got like a fucking tear in my eye as soon as they put it down. I, I, it was like, it was like you, you, you reunited with a long lost love. Okay. I mean, I just, now at this point, the hospital called me. It annoyed me. So, you know, by the time I bit into my sandwich, it didn't taste like I remember. The bread wasn't exactly fresh. Um, and although the corned beef and the pastrami were nice and moist and unctuous, I felt like it was lacking something. Like, I've never eaten corned beef or, or pastrami and go, I think this needs a little more seasoning or a little more salt. I've never said that. Ever, my entire life. Now I'm picky when it comes to corned beef because nobody really makes it better than me. But these people were close. I just, I don't know. It didn't taste the same. Now, maybe they just had an off day. Okay, I've been going to this place for probably 20 years. I've never had an off day there. Maybe first time in 20 years, I'll let them slide. I don't know if maybe they changed their staff, their cooks and everything because they were closed for so long because of COVID. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to give them another shot, but I mean, I, I, with, with any degree of confidence, I could tell you this place was the best fucking deli in New York City after yesterday. I can't say it anymore. And I got to admit it, I'm a little fucking heartbroken over it, okay? I walked out, I mean, I, I ate half my sandwich because, you know, you can't finish that whole fucking thing in one shot and expect to function. I did have the other half this afternoon. It tasted a little bit better because I guess it was marinating in the fridge, but... I don't know. Like I said, it wasn't it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I'm a little upset about it. So there's that. Uh, in other news, Mikhail Gorbachev died. He's the former president of Russia for all of you little whippersnappers that weren't around in the 80s. Uh, what makes him historical? He had the shit stain on his head. If you ever saw Rocky IV, they had a, a like a like a like a body double of the guy. Okay, he had the fucking he had like this. It looked like somebody smashed a glass uh, a jar of grape jelly on his fucking head. He had this big purple mark on his head. Anyway, what makes him historical was he was the president that Reagan convinced to end the Cold War. Remember, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. I've been waiting like forever to do a fucking Reagan impression. Okay, so yeah, he dropped that. I think he was like 91, okay? That Russian vodka will keep you alive for a long time. And let us not forget that this weekend is Labor Day weekend, the unofficial end of the summer, and it's supposed to rain all weekend. So today is probably going to be your best fucking day. They said tomorrow, cloudy, rainy, Sunday, Monday, rain. It's over, Johnny. Okay, summer's over. I know, I go, I go through this too, this, this fucking, like, this, hmm, this summer, like, this post-summer depression thing, like you, you're like the last week or two before Labor Day, like you're hanging on to everything, like dear life, you know, like you don't want anything to end, any of the summer parties and things during the week, and it just all comes to a halt, and then that's it, and then, you know, fall. I mean, they got pumpkin spice shit out now, but again, they also had it out like two weeks ago. Um, now they got this new, um, they, they, I was at Dunkin' Donuts the, uh, today. And they have pumpkin spice coffee. And then they have something else called uh, pumpkin nut coffee. I didn't know pumpkins had nuts. At what point did someone go, let's get pumpkin and nuts and make a coffee? I, this is just stupid. Coffee should be fucking coffee and that's it. If you're one of these people that has a complicated coffee order in Dunkin' Donuts, do us all a fucking favor and blow your brains out in the fucking parking lot. Okay? Okay, so. <laughs> you made it to the Friday wrap up, the Friday wrap ups end of summer Labor Day spectacular. This is going to be a long one, kids. Today's show is loaded with goodies of all kinds. Mutants, sex ed, Donald Trump. How's that for a fucking intro? Get ready for another bumpy one, baby. Here we go. All right. So on your hokal hoedown, 
Oh, God, this woman is a fucking disaster. You know something? I'm going to start off by saying this. And I've said it once or twice already. And I'm so aggravated that I got to keep saying it. But I actually miss fucking Cuomo. I miss nostrils. He wasn't that dumb. This fucking woman is a... Holy shit, she's a fucking retard. I think she takes the short bus to work every day. So, as most of you know, earlier this year, the Supreme Court shot down New York's ridiculous rule that if you wanted a full carry permit, you needed to show a compelling reason. Like, you couldn't get a fucking full carry in New York. You had to give them a reason. Okay? Supreme Court decided that that was unconstitutional, because the Second Amendment, you right to bear arms, and shot it down. <clears throat> okay? They, they correctly deemed that as unconstitutional. Um, so this dribbling moron of a fucking governor quickly went to work to further fuck with our right to bear arms by introducing an entire new slate of gun laws. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I do not disagree with all of them. I know it's a couple of, a couple of you have like grabbed your chest like, oh my God. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not crossing over to the dark side. You know, listen. One thing about me, I, I, I could be a little political, and I, I tend to lean towards the conservative side of things, okay? Um, but, you, you know, listen, if, if, if you make a good point, I'm going to agree with you. You know what I mean? So, I, I, I don't disagree with all of them, just fucking most of them, all right? So, although it may be easier now uh, to obtain a full carry permit for the state, that law, the Supreme Court ruling went into effect uh, yesterday... Uh, the first, and subsequently, so do the rest of these fucking laws. Um, <clears throat> so even though it's easier to get a permit, the bulk of these laws limit where you can actually carry your legally licensed and registered personal defense tool. Okay? Because let's face it, that's what it is for people like us. Okay? Uh, that wish to obtain um, a gun legally. It's not a weapon at that point. It's a personal defense tool. Legally licensed carriers of firearms don't just run around shooting people, okay? They're not, they're, not, they're not walking into a liquor store and holding them up. You know who does that? People who carry guns illegally. They're called criminals, just in case you were trying to Google what the right term for that was, okay? Those are the people that will stick you up. Those are the people that randomly shoot at you. Those are the people that are going to hold up a gas station, a liquor store, a jewelry store. Those are the people that just start fucking popping off shots in the middle of the street. Not people who obtain a license and firearm legally. Okay? When you do that, when you obtain a license to carry one of these legally, it's no longer a weapon. It's a tool. A personal defense tool. We're going to call it a PDT. So, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> the animals that are walking the streets with illegal guns, you can, they, you can refer to them as weapons. Because they're going to they're gonna be used to harm and kill you. Now, let's talk about the laws. Here's the ones that I agree with. Okay? okay we'll, we'll start off on the good foot. So they want, to, they want to increase background checks or do background checks, which they already did, so that's nothing new, okay? And I'm all for that. You don't want to give a gun to somebody who's got a history of, like, you know, mental instability. They just got out of the fucking alphabet factory. You know, they walk around mumbling and talking to themselves and shit like that. They want to raise the age um, to buy an assault rifle from 18 to 21. Now, I've even said they should do this way before Hochul thought of it, so maybe she got it from the show. I'm totally in agreement with that. There's no reason why an 18-year-old kid needs a fucking assault rifle. Honestly, there's no reason why an 18-year-old kid needs a fucking sidearm either. A hunting rifle, if they're being properly supervised, you know, if you're going hunting with your family, I, I did that as a kid, that's fine. Okay, but not a fucking, you know, not an AK-47, okay, or an AR-15. They don't, you don't need that, all right? So I'm okay with that. Now, they want to do social media checks. Now, I'm all right with that, provided that they do it correctly. Let me explain, okay? Like, if, if you, if you, if you're like me, right? Like, if you're like a political, now, I don't, I'm not on social media at all. This is my only form of social media, if you can consider that, um... 
<laughs> I mean, I hope they don't look at this and go, oh my God, let's ban him. That's what I mean. Like, if, you, if you're voicing your opinions in a fucking, you can be agitated, but as long as, like, at no point of the, do I say I want to go blow up the White House, okay? No. But, I mean, like, if you're on social media and you're saying, like, like these fucking kids that shoot up schools and shit, how, you know, you're going to blow up a school and do this to a building and kill people and that, ba -ba 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 you know, if, you, if you're detailing your plans of assault on the world, you know, and then, yeah, absolutely, that person shouldn't be granted a fucking license. Now, if, I mean, if you say it like, like I always say, oh, part one of my killing spree is going to start today, that doesn't actually mean I'm going to go on a killing spree, okay? Just let's clear this fucking shit up, all right? I say things, you know, it's I, dark humor, all right? You know what I mean? Like, it's just... You talk to anybody from fucking Brooklyn, they're all going to sound the same, right? You talk to anybody from fucking Queens, they're all going to sound the same. That's what I mean. At no point do I say I'm going to go out and create mass violence. Okay, so I mean, as long as they're, you know, I mean, like, if you're a MAGA supporter and they don't want to give you a fucking uh, a firearm license because of that, then yeah, that's irresponsible. Okay, then, then, then they're being discriminatory. You follow what I'm saying? So if, if the social media thing, I'm kind of in agreement if they could do it responsibly and, 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 and not and not with prejudice. Okay? Just weed out the fucking psychopaths that are out there, you know, polishing their nails black and like rocking back and forth and, and like a diaper and, and loading an AR fifteen and strapping dynamite to their nipples that they're gonna go fucking blow up a building or something. Those are the people that should not have guns, okay? Uh legal ones anyways. <clears throat> or any for that matter. So that's that's the other. The other one that I, I I agree with is firearm. They want they want you to to complete. I think it was a sixteen hour uh, firearm training course. Hey, I'm all for that. Now, granted, I know how to use a gun. Okay, I've been shooting guns since I was a kid, but that doesn't mean I know everything. If I had to go through one of these courses to get a firearm license, I got no problem with that at all. Okay, and I, and listen, there's a lot of people out there that think that they want a gun. Uh, and they have no clue how to fucking use one. So, I all for the fucking training. I, even if they wanted to do like, you know, like a, like a, like when you renew your license, a, a training course for every renewal. It's a pain in the ass. But listen, you know, gun technology changes, ammunition technology changes. And why not? I mean, you know, it's not like we're in the fucking Wild West here. Uh, a training course is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, you're limited as to where you can go shoot. So I, I'm okay with that, all right? Now, here's the shit that I don't agree with. Pro prohibiting where you can carry your legally licensed and registered personal defense tool. Okay, so Hochul described these areas as sensitive areas. See, they can't stop you from getting a license, but they can stop you from carrying your gun in, 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 in pretty much you know, in certain places that are considered to be sensitive. So, here's some of these sensitive areas. Um, <clears throat> airports, train stations, bus stations, subway stations, any public transportation station for that matter, or on any public transportation, like subways, buses, whatever. Uh, schools, parks, houses of worship, hospitals, medical facilities, bars, restaurants, theaters, stadiums, etc. And of course, Times Square. Now, here's the problem. These are all the fucking places that you get shot at. Okay? Why? Why? Okay? Because the people who are carrying illegal weapons are going to stop carrying them. Okay? So you're prohibited from carrying your legally registered PDT in these sensitive areas. But the fucking animals that are walking around carrying illegal firearms, they're not, they're not subject to these. Okay? So <clears throat> think of something for a second. If you're legally allowed to carry a weapon in a school or a church or something like that, right? And it's known that people could randomly be carrying legally licensed PDTs. The morons that want to come in there and shoot the fucking place up are going to think twice about it. They're going to be less apt to get nervy if they think two or three people are going to fucking shoot back at them. All right? <laughs> Take Pennsylvania, for example. You never hear of this shit happening in PA. And you know why? Because PA is an open carry state. 
So, which means you can carry your, your fire. You don't need a, you actually don't need a license to carry one. It just has to be exposed. However, if you want a concealed carry permit, it's not a big deal and it's good statewide and there's no restrictions. So people are less apt to get a little fucking stupid in, in Pennsylvania because about 19 people are going to return fire. Okay. Crime rates, Philadelphia side, crime rates low. But I'll tell you right now, the crime rate in Philly is a lot lower than it is in New York. And Philadelphia always gets a bad rap for that shit. Okay? Even though it's a blue city, crime rate's a little bit lower. Not by much, but a little bit. Because there are people carrying licensed PDTs. All right? So, um, <clears throat> now, that said, you know, so... Again, if people, if it's known that people are carrying legally in these areas, there's going to be less crime just by, just organically. But of course, this fucking moron just, just shit the bed on that one, right? Okay, so, if a business wants to allow uh, on-premise carry, so now when it comes to businesses like stores, grocery stores, bar, now bars and restaurants, doesn't matter if they want to allow it or not, it's illegal so you can't. So if a bar or a restaurant wants to allow... Uh, people to carry a firearm in their place of business, they can't. So follow me. So if a business wants to allow on-premise carry, they have to post signs stating that it's allowed. Okay? So they actually have to post signs up that say, you can carry your firearm here. Okay? All right? So now, although these places will not get robbed, <laughs> they will most likely be shunned and picketed by these cancel culture liberals. So... Most likely, even though a business wouldn't mind you carrying your legal PDT, they won't say it because they can't afford to lose the business since Biden and company basically wrecked the fucking economy. Let me let me put this in perspective for you, okay? If I'm a business owner and I want you to carry a, I want to allow you to carry a weapon in my place or a PDT in my place, um, <clears throat> I have to program my brain to stop saying that too. Um, I have to put a sign up, which honestly is discriminatory because I'm basically saying, you know, I'm basically alienating people who don't carry weapons because they maybe they don't feel comfortable now. OK, um, that's the same thing as me putting up a sign that says, you know, whites only. If I did that, oh my God, there'd be fucking chaos. There'd be blood in the streets. If I said, oh, you know, um, Italians only. Okay, that's discriminatory, right? Same thing. So, no business owner is going to do this. This would be fucking chaotic. All right? I, I, even by not putting up a sign, it's still fucking discriminatory. Because if I'm if I'm carrying a, a, a legally licensed gun, and now you don't have one of these signs, I can't come into your place of business? You, you understand what I'm saying? This is just fucking stupid on all levels. So, now let's talk about Times Square. I, I, I separated this for a reason. Um, they said Times Square is a sensitive area. And that smiling, retarded mayor motherfucker gets on TV and goes, You don't need to get... You ever see this man talk? I just, I want to fucking punch him in the throat. He sounds stupid. He sounds like an uneducated fool. <laughs> a little smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So he's, he sounds like fucking Mushmouth from, uh, you know, uh, Fat Albert. So, um, <laughs> so he gets on and he says, you know, you don't need to carry a gun in Times Square because the NYPD is there and they're going to protect you. Now, I was there this week, as I said, and <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, it really is. Um, <laughs> now, granted. I didn't have a problem because I always have that please give me a reason to crack your fucking head open face. And it works. Okay? It does. It works. Because, I mean, one guy came was about to approach me to, like, panhandle. He went, oh, yeah, man. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay? So, when I'm walking around the city, like I said, my face usually is a deterrent. Um, but, yeah, there's NYPD in, in Times Square. And the NYPD ain't gonna do shit. But why? Because it's considered to be fucking racist if they do their job. Okay? So, they can't do anything until a crime is actually committed. And by then it's too fucking late. Yeah, yeah, they'll arrest that person while you're on your way to the hospital in a fucking ambulance or a morgue. And then they'll be out in a fucking hour and a half and you'll be dead. 
or like a fucking vegetable. All right? Um, so, bottom line, if I get caught in Times Square or any of these sensitive areas with a legally licensed and registered PDT, I'm going to end up doing... I'm going to end up in Sing Sing doing a fucking nickel on an illegal weapons charge. But, you know, one of these assholes that actually commits a crime in the city, that they're out in an hour, bail reform, all kinds of shit. I mean, instead of passing laws that repeal the bail reform bullshit, or coming up with laws that will improve the rising crime problem, or allow the fucking cops to do their jobs. This asshole is more focused on noisy mufflers and stifling our ability to protect ourselves while they make the problem worse. Listen, I can keep going on this, but I'm going to stop here, otherwise this is going to be a fucking three-hour show, and I may have a coronary. All right? On another Biden blunder. Well, the other day, this senile fuck called all MAGA Republicans fascists and threats to the country, spoken like a true communist. The communists always called um, their enemies, the people who wanted to um, liberate the country from communist rule, they always called them fascists. Which to me, fascist, communist, almost the same shit, but whatever. So, and, and, and <clears throat> he also said that we were a threat to the country. You goddamn right we're a fucking threat. We're a threat to the Democratic Communist Party. Okay? Hey, listen, if they want to call me a fascist because I want low gas prices, no inflation, no government trying to force me to get a vaccine that I don't want that really doesn't fucking work, uh, low taxes, no infringements on my constitutional rights, no left-wing demented government overreach, just like it was before this old fuck started leaving PP stains all over the fucking White House carpet, okay? Uh, then so be it. Go ahead, call me whatever the fuck you want. I say it makes me a patriot, and 79 million plus Americans fucking agree with me. You know, the ones that were still alive at the time of the election. Oh, boy. <clears throat> okay, kids, get your tickets out. We're about to hop onto that maniacal, magical express into mayhem and fuckery. The crazy train's about to leave the station all aboard. Woo-hoo! First stop. That's right, New York. Okay, so <clears throat> it's now illegal for anyone other than 21 to buy Ready Whip whipped cream. <laughs> yep, you know, the whipped cream in the can. Yeah, Hochul needed to make this a fucking law, too. She's very busy this month um, because they're afraid... That these stupid fucking kids are going to use it to snort nitrous oxide. Whippets. Um, <laughs> is, this, is this what we're really worried about? <laughs> okay, these stupid fucking kids that are huffing whipped cream. These were the same, same jerk-offs that thought, you know, that were eating Tide Pods. Do we need these people in society? Like, if, you, if you're looking at a can of Ready Whip and you're planning your Friday night, I mean... What is this? What is this person going to contribute to society? Okay, <laughs> they probably have liberal parents. How about instead of inconveniencing the entire state, you, you look at your kids and you say, "Stop it!" <laughs> okay, and offer to knock them out with the can of whipped cream instead. It's called being a parent. Okay, and let the lawmakers focus on more pressing matters like the fact that New York is going down the fucking toilet like a corn riddled turd. Okay, next stop, New Jersey, right across the bridge. So, New Jersey schools are sending letters out to parents asking if they want their children to participate in sex ed and gender identity classes starting in kindergarten. I mean, what the fuck happened to shapes and colors, reading, math? How about we focus on that, okay? Not if, do you like your PP or not? Like, I mean, th I mean, th seriously, I mean, you know, normal shit that you used to do in kindergarten and first grade and third grade, okay? I mean, why are we teaching kids how to fuck in kindergarten, okay? This is basically pedophilia. I don't understand why no one has not picked up on that. Plus, it's going to confuse the ever-loving fuck out of these kids. They're little kids. They, they, they don't know. They don't understand this shit. Fuck, I'm 44. I barely understand this, okay? And I have a fucking PhD, for Christ's sake. 
I could just hear the sing-alongs now. I see you, you see me. Should I cut off my PP? I don't know if I'm a boy or girl. I thought I did before I came to school. <laughs> just what we need. More confused people in New Jersey. They already don't know how to make fucking left-handed turns, okay? Or drive on the turnpike. <clears throat> Next stop, Florida. This one's going to be a hot topic. All right, so, you know, you YouTube censors, you know, you overly censor people. Maybe, maybe now's the time to go to the fridge, get a snack, finger your asshole, you know, do something. Construct, walk away from the, the algorithms for a minute, okay? So, in light of the news that the FBI leaned on social media companies to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop scandal so to not hand Donald Trump a landslide win in, 2020, in the 2020 election, uh, which just recently came to light. Uh, Zuckerberg was on Joe Rogan, and he basically said it, and he inadvertently admitted it, but yeah, the FBI, um, preface this carefully so I don't get yanked, strongly suggested that they push that story further, further, further down on the news feeds. You know, and and basically, and Twitter took it like ten steps further. You said Hunter laptop, and <laughs> you were in fucking Twitter jail. But so <clears throat> Trump put out a post after this news broke. Trump put out a post on a social media platform, Truth Social, which you should join by the way if you haven't already, uh, stating that they should reinstate him immediately, or at the very least, hold a new election. They should reinstate me immediately. Uh, fake news, uh, or, or 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 at least hold a new election. Listen, I'm sure there's a lot of people that maybe voted for Biden that wouldn't mind the new election right now because they probably have buyer's remorse. But I'll digress. Now I know this comes across as unhinged and mentally irregular. At least that's how the media is trying to spin it. But Uncle Tommy's here to to clear things up for you. Okay, so he does actually have a point here. Hear me out. Okay, I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, 2020 election rigged, whatever, the results are the results, whatever it is, it is. There's no way that they're going to reinstate them and there's no way that they're going to have a, a re-election now. Okay, it, but Trump, Trump is a fucking ball breaker and he's not a stupid man. I, I this He does not believe that they're going to do it. He just throws that out there just to fucking aggravate people. But he has a point, and he, that's the. This is the. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is why he's saying it because they've been saying all along that this election was, we'll say, suspect. Because you got to watch what you say on fucking Twitter, on, on, on YouTube. You know, <laughs> freedom of speech. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you got to watch what you say. So um, uh, the, the 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 results of the election had a lot of anomalies. To him. I'll throw some $20 words out there. That way it confuses the people on YouTube. Um, so, you know, there were questions. There were allegations. There were... Uh, um, <laughs> there, there was some suspect behavior. Now, by the FBI actually suggesting that these social media companies... Um, you know, uh, suppress the story. That technically is um, election tampering. Okay, now I'm not... <laughs> I mean, listen, there have been polls that they took that said if had you been more aware of the details of the Hunter Biden thing, would you have voted for Biden? People said no. So that's, that's out there, okay? So, assuming that all the votes for Biden were legitimate ones, assuming... I'd have to say about a third of them would have probably swung to Trump, and therefore he would have won hands down, right? And the reason that that didn't happen was because um, these companies suppressed the story. They suppressed the news. You couldn't talk about it. You couldn't discuss it. Matter of fact, news channels like CNN, MSNBC wouldn't even air the story. They wouldn't even. They maybe mention it and then move on something very, uh, something quickly. Um, <clears throat> um, Listen, the, Pfizer did the same shit with the vaccines. They could, you know, they could have rolled that vaccine out a couple months sooner, but they didn't. They held it. They held it back because it would have given Trump a win. So there were there were these things in play that did 
directly affect the fucking the election and therefore skewed the results. Okay, I'm not saying there was voter tampering. I'm not saying. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna go down that road. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna address the fact that you know, votes appeared in the middle of the night and shit like that. I'm not saying. You know, I mean, the re the election's over. It is what it is. Now we're stuck with this senile fuck that's you know peeing on the plants in the White House for another two years. I mean, he already wrecked the country in inside of a week. <laughs> First ten days on the job, he fucked us all up the ass with, with no loop. Okay, so I'm not saying that. But I am saying Trump's got a point. The election, I didn't say rigged, but the FBI did interfere. There was election interference. Let's at least fucking say that, okay? So he does have a point. So, you know, by him doing what he's doing, because he knows the fucking media is just, they're hungry, they're going to latch right onto it. I mean, if you gotta, if you, if you, unless you just land on planet Earth, I, I, I sincerely believe that he does not think that they're gonna just fucking turn around. And go, oh, okay, let's reinstate him. All right. I mean, I have my theories on the whole fucking Mar-a-Lago raid, but I don't want to be labeled a conspiracy theorist, even though I kind of have an idea as to the modus operandi there. But we'll discuss that on another show. So I'm just putting that out there for you. Okay, while we're in Florida, let's let's head over to uh, Madeira Beach. Okay. So I love this story. So some chick gets pulled over uh, for a DUI. Her name was Amy Harrington, 38-year-old, from Madeira Beach. Um, very cute, by the way. She's, <laughs> you know? What a fine Irish slash she is now. So, <laughs> get this. So they pull her out of the car to give her a, um, a sobriety test. She clearly was not going to pass the sobriety test. But she did something pretty fucking interesting. <laughs> Take a look. She started fucking step dancing. She's walking along the line, and then all of a sudden, she breaks into an Irish chick. Look at this fat cop standing next to her. This woman is fucking pissed. This girl's awesome. First of all, got a nice ass on her, too. Look at her. She's probably a fucking professional dancer. I don't know if she's a pole dancer, but it breaks into this little Irish jig. <laughs> she's laughing. Look, look at this fucking, look at this beast of a cop. She's pissed because this girl's hot and she looks like Barney Rump. <laughs> I mean, subsequently, they did lock her up anyway. But I mean... I mean, I guess she knew... She, <laughs> this is what I like about this broad. She clearly knew she was going to go to jail. But she figured she'd have some fun doing it. <laughs> Good for you, Amy. You see, if you were in New York, you probably wouldn't have... You, you, you probably wouldn't have uh, gotten locked up. A cop might have sexually assaulted you, but you would have not gotten locked up. So, last stop, California. So, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne said he wants to leave California and move back to England, claiming that the reason that he wants to do this is the gun violence. The, the gun violence. You want to go back to England? It's just fucking crazy. People are getting shot every day. <laughs> this, man's, this man's brain is basically cream of wheat at this point. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love Ozzy. Okay? He's funny to watch. I like his music. But... He's like every other fucking libtarded, full of shit celebrity. Celebrity. So in the same interview, he said that the taxes in California are ridiculous and that they're actually cheaper in England. So don't hear me this bullshit about gun violence. The fucking reason that you want to go back to England is the taxes, not the fucking violence, okay? These fucking people, like I said, they're all full of shit, okay? So go. Goodbye. Bye. All right? I can always fucking listen to your music. Goodbye. All right? <clears throat> fucking stupid all right kids <laughs> your sports update mm. so mlb yankees play the race tonight at 7 10 how about my boy judgy this week breaking 50 plus home runs the only bright spot to the yankees season this year is aaron judge otherwise can you believe this fucking adrolis chapman bullshit this up this ugly, big-lipped fuck, okay, is out for 15 fucking days because of a tattoo infection, okay? Who the fuck gets a tattoo during the regular season, especially this close to the fucking playoffs? 
Who? Who does this? Okay? Of all the stupid, ignorant, irresponsible, and asinine fucking things, this fucking moron, they should find this retarded cunt his entire fucking salary for the fucking season. Okay? What a fuck... See, Gerani was right about this fucking guy. He's a piece of fucking garbage. They should have left his dumb fucking Caribbean ass in fuck wherever the fuck he's from, Cuba, whatever the fuck, in Chicago where they found him. So to fill the closer slot, they signed Tyler Duffy from the Twins, who fucking hates Yankee fans. What the fuck is Cashman thinking up there? Is he up there like just fisting himself, and then every so often he has a fucking thought. Okay? See what he said? We don't hate people, Tyler. Okay? We hate morons and jerk-offs like you, you dumb futz. I don't want to hear this shit that they're in first place. They're only in first place because the rest of the division is like a limp dick in a fucking orgy. Okay? That's, that's the only reason why the Yankees are in first place. They dropped the series... To the fucking A's. Last week I told you the A's was so boring that the highlight of a game was some guy getting a fucking blowjob in the stands. Okay? Yankees go and fucking lose to him. All right? Uh, Mets play the Nats tonight at 7-10. Phillies and Giants tonight at 10-15. NFL! <laughs> More misery. Okay, so, well, Giants blew their fucking last preseason game to the Jets. To the Jets, okay? They blew three fucking leads in one game. I think two of them within the same, like, five, ten minutes of the game. The last quarter. Imagine. Okay. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, aside from that, they had a pretty decent preseason. Which means absolutely fucking nothing. Come regular season, I fully expect both the Giants and the Jets to completely shit the bed. The question is... Which one of them is going to take a bigger shit? Okay. Regular season starts on uh, September 8th. Uh, Rams versus the Bills. This year, kids, we're gonna, we need to be paying attention to two teams. Okay. Two teams. I said this last year. I think I was right. But this year, I'm going to say it again. So we need to be paying attention to the Bills. Okay. Because I feel like this might be their year. Listen, I love Josh Allen. I think he's a great quarterback. Um. Buffalo Bills are you know, the only New York team that's actually in New York. And they're hungry. They haven't seen a Super Bowl in a long time, and they're right there. They're right fucking there, okay? So pay attention to the Bills this year, kids. And I'm going to say this. I haven't said this in a long time. The Raiders. Pay a lot of attention to the Vegas Raiders. First of all, since they moved to Las Vegas, they built that big, beautiful stadium. Uh, Vegas has thrown a lot of fucking money behind this team. Uh, and they're a sneaky team. They're a sneaky fucking team. I mean, the Raiders haven't really been playing too well the last whatever, but I'm telling you, last couple of years I've been watching them. This this team is shaping up to be something scrappy, okay? Um, their quarterback is very scrappy, Derek Carr. I like Derek. He's got a lot of potential. He just needs to start delivering the big games. So, like I said, pay attention to the Raiders because I could see them sneaking in, sneaking in very easily here. Okay, they're going to come out of the fucking left field. They, they, they could be in the playoffs as well. Dare I even say a Super Bowl? <laughs> My friend Sal just probably just 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 came all over himself when I said that. But um... <laughs> so on what the fuck is that? We're going to talk about. Apron belly. <laughs> now, considering I saw so much of this shit this week, I felt it was apropos to talk about it on today's show. So, <laughs> basically, apron belly is when your stomach hangs past your waist like an apron of fat. <laughs> no, I'm not talking like a gut. Like everybody has a little bit of a gut. Some some people have a bigger one, a little bit. Even if a woman has a little bit of a belly, it's not a big deal. Okay, you know they're not going to go anywhere. But I'm talking about like when your gut. Is past your fucking cock or past your vagina. Like, if you're a guy and you have apron belly, right? You don't even have a dick anymore. It's just, it's under there. You haven't seen it in years. It doesn't talk to you. When you pee, it's like a fucking cascading, cascading waterfall, okay? 
women, you know, you, you gotta like lift that fucking thing up there after a while, your arms start doing the shakes. You know, that's what I'm talking about. It's just, it's like, sometimes it goes past your waistline. Sometimes it looks like you got two stomachs because you, you these people, I saw them all this week. They, 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 they're they lumpy, they're huge. They have these fucking, these fat aprons and then the pants were too tight and then you could, and it looked like it had two, it was like cutting the stomach in half and it looked like it had two. You know, they pulled their underwear up over it so they got this, this thing. Oh, <laughs> In front, in front of not a full pot, just this fucking gut in front of in front of their vagina. And then if they're wearing a dress, you see the outline. It's like Santa Claus. Have you ever seen Christmas time? Those, those pictures of Santa Claus carrying a sack of toys over his shoulder. Well, it looks like that. She's in reverse. So, <clears throat> the scientific name for this <laughs> is abdominal pan pan paniculus. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I saw so much of this shit, I fucking Googled it. I had a little bit of downtime at this show. It was bored out of my mind. Uh, so I bet you're thinking, well, I bet that goes away with diet and exercise, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it doesn't, actually, okay? I mean, weight loss does help reduce the fat in your belly apron, uh, but you can't fix the stretched skin without a fucking tummy tuck. So there you go. Uh, you might as well stay fat at that point. All right, kids on, right, a racist. In Alabama, speaking of mutants, it's, <laughs> it's against the law to wear a fake mustache that causes laughter in church. They needed to make that a law, I suppose. Well, that's right. It's the South. I'm not even sure what to say about that one. They needed to make it a law. Okay. All right, kids on your PSA. Let's get serious on this one. Matter of fact, I got to take a take another sip of my magical elixir from Mexico. <sighs> Ranch water. Okay, automatic flushing toilets that flush and suck the paper down before you sit down to take a shit. Okay, like when you go into the bathroom. I mean, we're not on them all, right? You know, you don't just sit on a fucking bowl. You got to put the paper around. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to meet the fucking sadist that came up with this, okay? I'd like to find them and throw them down the fucking toilet. Like, just, just, just drown them in the fucking toilet. You gotta play, when you put the paper down, you gotta play a game of fucking ass bingo so that you don't get some disease like ring around the asshole. Because what happens is, like, as you, just before you sit down, like, you, you line up the paper, you get it all nice. Just before you sit down, all of a sudden, and it sucks the fucking paper down the goddamn toilet. Now you gotta turn around and redo this. All, and you're doing this under pressure. Okay? Okay? While you're trying, you're trying to not shit all over yourself and the wall and the stall and the person's shoes next to you. Okay? You're doing all this while holding on to your fucking ball sacks and you want handing it because God... Listen, God forbid your balls, provided you still have some, uh, hit the edge of the fucking ball. Okay? Oh, oh God! I, I, listen, I promise you no one wants to walk into a men's room and see me washing my nutsack in the fucking sink. Okay? Because, I, I mean, I, I, I'd have to pull Clorox on them. So, yeah, I know what you think. I mean, yeah, you gotta... If you're using like the sanitary seat, you know you gotta like what I you gotta like rip the little fucking middle part out so it doesn't pull it down. You got you got you run the pressure like I said. You got about three seconds before you shit your pants, and now you gotta do toilet paper origami. Who's got time for this shit? I mean, just it should be fucking illegal to install these things in a public bathroom. What is wrong with people? They don't want to flush a toilet. Okay, just leave the fucking little lever on the stack that I can kick with my foot. Okay, I'll flush my own goddamn toilet. <sighs> Stay covid list, kids. No mask, don't ask. Haters can kiss my ass. And remember, who loves you, babe? It's been your Friday wrap-up. Happy Labor Day. I'll see you when I see you.